Hi, I'm Rusty Komori and this is Beyond the Lines. We broadcast live on Mondays from the beautiful Think Tech Hawaii TV studio in the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. This show is based on my book, which is also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, achieving greater success and sustaining that greater success, and finding greatness. My special guest today is Luby Gatsoff. She won the gold medal in the 2014 World Championship in aerobic gymnastics. Luby is an extraordinary champion and she founded and manages her amazing Golden Future business, which provides priceless opportunities for her to mentor kids and adults here in Hawaii. And today, we are going beyond world championships. Luby, great having you here today. Hi, thank you for having me here. It's, I feel so grateful to have you have a gold medalist world champion here. And this is the gold medal that you won. And it's heavy. I love it. I love it. <laughs> it's heavy, yeah. And this is the uh, medal that you received from the Austrian Federation, right? From the country. From the, yes, from the Austrian Republic. So that's the golden medal for outstanding contribution to our country and I'm very proud of both medals. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. What, what an acknowledgement. And um, you grew up in Austria? Yes, I grew up in Austria. I'm born in Bulgaria, okay. the capital Sofia. And I was six months old, um, a baby, when we moved to Austria. But I grew up in Austria and I went there to school and I finished two university degrees in Salzburg. One is a bachelor's for kinesiology Great. and sports science, and my master's degree is in health and fitness. So I have two cultures in me, and I'm very lucky and very happy that that's the case. And how many languages do you speak? Three. <laughs> so my native languages are German, of course, and Bulgarian, and English. And um, I'm still working on my English, but <laughs> it's getting better, and um, I learned French at school. So Well, you speak great English. And I, I want to ask you, I know that you have very supportive parents. Can you tell me about them? Yes. So my parents, my mom's name is Petra okay. and my dad's name is Christoph. And um, family is everything to me. They are my big supporters, my main believers, my rock. And um, we have always been together in a business, also back in Austria. Yeah. And um, once I started my own business here, I also, of course, included them in, in my golden future. Uh, my mom is teaching group classes with me, with the kids. Um, and my dad is uh, and going to be the supervisor for pain therapy. Great. This will come on a little later, but this is a very big um, um, role for my father. And I'm very happy we both, we we will interact and be together in that game. <laughs> a lot of exciting things happening with yeah. you. Now, I want to ask you, Luby, when did you first get interested in gymnastics? I've always been uh, very curious about movements. Um, so I remember that my mom always told me, you were a baby, and then I was six months old when I was able to stand. Okay. Um, so I was very stubborn. Um, and then I started with four or five to do handstands, do splits. And um, I signed up for rhythmic gymnastics when I was eight years old, so a little bit late. Um, but I did it, and it was the best decision ever that I did gymnastics. Can you explain the differences in artistic gymnastics and aerobic mm -hmm. gymnastics? So we have the International Federation of Gymnastics. It's also called uh, Fédération Internationale de Gymnastique. And in that federation, we have artistic gymnastics. I'll just say one name, Simone Biles. So they're flipping around the rings, the beam. We have rhythmic gymnastics. Um, so it's a female sport, and the girls are using equipment. Uh, very common is the ribbon, the rope, the ball. So. I think people can get an idea of that sport. Then we have trampoline, we have acrobatics, and we have aerobic gymnastics. And aerobic gymnastics is a mixture of all those. And I always say it's the cherry on the cake because we're the youngest gymnastics sports. 
um, but we're modern and you do a routine of one minute and 20 seconds. Really depends on which age level you are, plus minus five seconds, but you do that routine, you move nonstop. You try to tell a story with your choreography and at the same time you have to show strength, flexibility, you have to perform perfectly and do your difficulty elements. The higher, the better, the more points. And don't forget to smile. So <laughs> when you combine that mixture, it, for me, this is magic. And that's why I fell in love with aerobic gymnastics. And your, your mom was your coach. How did that evolve? For me, that was the biggest gift. Uh, my mom, I know very a lot of people when I have interviews there, Mm, how is it to work with a parent? Um, like, is it really you? And I say, well, I don't know, that was a gift to me, but my mom is like my best friend. I've always been super close with her and we never really had problems. And one look in our training and we definitely knew, okay, how can we help the other person? You know, how can we complete each other? And um, I couldn't imagine to have another coach but my mom. She. She was the one waking up at 11 p.m. and bringing me to the training hall because I was freaking out <laughs> that I had a mental block not doing a movement correctly. I'm like, Mom, I just have to go to the training hall. And she said, you can do that perfectly fine. You did it 20 times. No <laughs> mistake. And, and now only because you have the mental block, that doesn't mean you can not do it. I said, Mom, I need it. So we went midnight to the training hall. Actually, that was in the preparation before the World Championship. I did my stupid movement perfectly <laughs> and then we went home and then I had a beautiful sleep. But, you know, situations like that, not that an outside coach wouldn't do it, but I think having my mom so close to me, understanding me, my emotions, everything, my whole human being, also knowing when I can push harder and I'm saying, oh, I can't do it anymore, like that's my board. So, you can, you can. <laughs> it's just that's the perfect combination for me. And this is also a reason why, why I admire my parents so much. They're yeah, my big inspiration. Your, your mom, I mean, that's such a special relationship, having your mom as a coach. And I, I need to grab this gold medal again. I mean, this is just amazing. And I, I, I know that in 2012, you won the bronze medal in 2013 you won a silver medal and in the 2014 world championship in Cancun Mexico you won this gold medal yeah. can you tell me about that experience um, of course <laughs> it was um, magical uh, it was different uh, it was not even like I imagined it it was like I'm flying um, I've worked for that dream more than 17 years since I was eight and it was a very hard way. It was an up and down and mm -hmm. uh, you keep fighting and then you're getting punched into your face. I mean, not really, but <laughs> yeah. like mentally thinking and it was very hard. Um, but actually to, you know, get that medal and perform the way you've imagined it and do it even better and then I always say, you know, standing actually across from your dream. Yeah. It's still, I'm getting goosebumps. That's something um, I'll forever be grateful for because it's a one lifetime experience. It's not only the medal, it's, it's way more that you get with the medal uh, that makes you be a stronger person and have a very good character, uh, learn how to deal with problems, challenges, and just go one step more and more forward. Yeah. Mm. Well, winning the gold medal at the World Championship, I mean, it, 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 it's so much meaning. I mean, it talks, it, it, represents, it represents sacrifice and commitment and resiliency and everything. Now, how, how did it feel knowing that you were the best in the world at that moment? It was amazing. It was, uh, was very speechless. Uh, Austria is a small country and we had not too many athletes competing um, just because we're small and everything the development is different in each country yeah and um, getting that gold for Austria was uh, a big honor um, I felt pride and most of all I felt peace yeah. um, after such a long time um, so it is really a very beautiful gift to be a champion and um, you know inspire people 
and you are definitely inspiring a lot of people. And <laughs> I'm I, trying. I have to say, Luby, you are extremely strong and flexible. You do all these amazing poses. You have incredible balance. I mean, so much strength and grace. I mean, there's amazing pictures of you doing in amazing poses. How do you do it? Hard work, hard work, hard work. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just you, you, so before the world championship, I was training six to eight hours a day um, to maintain that after it, when you're on the peak, um, I was training three to four hours a day. Um, so you really have to continue your training every day. Uh, doesn't matter how you're feeling. And I, I think that's also one, one parameter that you have to, to keep in mind. As a champion or someone that wants to achieve more than the rest, doesn't matter how you're feeling. You have to have that discipline yeah. to be better than the day before. And you know, get that plus. I have. A, I always tell myself I have to get that plus and put it on my golden list. If I don't have that plus, I'm not finishing my day. And then I have to force myself do that because not every day is beautiful. It is, but sometimes it's harder. Sometimes it's easier. But you have to get that plus. And once I have that plus, I can go to bed and sleep well, and get ready for the next plus. And <laughs> that's how it goes. Well, what was a typical training day like? I mean, how, how long did you train for when you were competing? Um, when the competition was a little more far away, let's say two, two months, um, I was still also in the university. So basically it was very hard because I woke up around uh, 5.30, 6 a.m. in the morning. And then I was driving with my car an hour and a half to Salzburg. Um, I was at a university to let's say 2, 3 p.m., really depended on what kind of classes I had. Then I was driving back an hour and a half. Wow. Then I had my training of three to four hours. And then I had somewhere in between meals. And then I had my mental training before going to bed and writing my papers or my homework. Yeah. So basically, I went to bed pretty late, after midnight for sure. And when I had to prepare for exams, it was I was and old, do you say old? <laughs> uh, only my room was with light. I was studying for exams, yeah. but um, it is what it is. For me, always education was a very important thing and in our family as well. So I knew it's not only about sport, although that's my big love and big passion, but you have to educate yourself. If you're smart and you're intelligent, that will show also on the podium. You will think differently, yeah. you will react differently. Um, so I, I was proud that I wanted to, you know, keep going and pull that through and have two university degrees and my, my sport on the side too. Let's talk about your golden future business. Mm -hmm. We're very fortunate here in Hawaii that someone like you have this golden future business. Can you tell me what it's about? Yeah, so my, my business, Golden Future, offers uh, private sessions uh, for kids, adults, seniors, also people with disabilities. And um, this gives the people the opportunity to me to work with them really one-on-one -on -one and work on their personal need and tailor our training. Um, but besides of that, I also do group classes for gymnastics. So. I'm focusing on rhythmic gymnastics and aerobic gymnastics, and then I have a basic gymnastics group. And the rhythmic and aerobic gymnastics group is something that no one else is doing here in Hawaii. So if people you know, are interested for their kids to sign kids up for those two disciplines, they're really in golden hands. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, more than that, I'm also creating classes for adults. It's not yoga or Pilates, which I really appreciate too but I'm doing neurofitness, I'm doing special um, stretch classes. Um, and if I get a group uh, with people that have diabetes, I can create a class for diabetes um, and consider all the criteria that I have to consider where I can create a school program. So I'm very open because my knowledge is very, very wide and I can really create what people need. Well, I, I love hearing that. You, you can basically do it all and you adapt to everything. And Luby, we're going to take a quick break. Okay. And then when we come back, I want to talk more about Golden Future okay. and about success. Thank you. You are watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, world champion gold medalist, Luby Gatsoff. We will be back in 60 seconds. 
welcome to Out of the Comfort Zone. I am your villainous host, R.B. Kelly. Today we are playing two truths and a lie, and I will tell you two truths, and you will tell me which one is the lie. Truth number one, this is a real mustache. Truth number two, I want you to watch my show on Tuesdays at 1 p.m. So tune in and let me know which is the truth and which is the lie. I'm R.B. Kelly with Out of the Comfort Zone and show up next Tuesday to see my mustache live. Hello, my name is Stephanie Mock and I'm one of three hosts of Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Food and Farmer series. Our other hosts are Matt Johnson and Pamai Weigert and we talk to those who are in the fields and behind the scenes of our local food system. We talk to farmers, chefs, restaurateurs, and more to learn more about what goes into sustainable agriculture here in Hawaii. We are on at Thursdays at 4 p.m., and we hope we'll see you next time. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on ThinkTech Hawaii. My special guest today is Luby Gatsoff, the 2014 world champion gold medalist in aerobic gymnastics. And today we are going beyond world championships. Luby, I want to ask you more about your golden future business. You, you're impacting kids greatly, I mean, both boys and girls. Can you tell me how you're impacting them in a positive way? I'm always trying to make them go out of their skin, go out of their comfort zone. Um, so I'm pushing, but I know kids um, and their abilities very well. I'm trying really to get them to know their character too. So I can tell, are they playing with their borders or is it really the border they're telling me? Like, Luby, I can't do anymore. And then like, okay, I respect that. So. Um, I think I have a very good human knowledge. I can feel that vibe. When is a person ready to go for more? Where can I push and where can I pull? Um, because I've worked with so many different people many years ago and, and now I'm continuing. Um, and this is something special. Plus I give a lot of insight of my thoughts when people say, um, kids say, I can do that, uh, Miss Luby, and then I'm saying, oh, you can, and the vocabulary of I can't, I will never hear that again, because yeah. we'll do 20 squats, <laughs> you're going to do sit-ups, and then it continues and continues. So I want them to understand that those words are having a lot of power in our mind, and, um, and more and more. So I can talk for a long time and tell, yeah. but basically I'm really trying to be different and be a good example. When they do something, I'm trying to do it with them so they can see the example. How, how is Miss Luby doing this? And why is she talking that way? And I always tell them we have a feedback round. I want to give the kids the opportunity to ask me questions. Um, so that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I mean, you're, you have discipline and you read the, the students very well, the kids. You also impact adults. Can you tell me about how you're impacting adults in a positive way here? Um, yeah, I mean, I have one example. Um, his name is Brian Munoz, and um, he lost now almost 30 pounds in four months. And it was not a fast, and it was not too slow. It was just in a perfect timing. So he can really keep that weight now. And He's so proud of himself. We're doing different kind of movements. And when he's a little injured, we're focusing on the weak parts. Um, so when he wants to increase his strength in his arm, and then I was like, well, now that your wrist is hurt, it hurts. We can focus on your core and work on your lower body. So, you know, everything happens for a reason. So let's focus also on your other weaknesses or other goals and then make you stronger in that way as well. So I'm using my golden philosophy uh, and telling them also, you know, go for the gold in everything in your life. Go for the gold in your relationship, go for the gold with your family, with your business. And basically, it works. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I love hearing that. And you also have a very popular after school program. Yes. Can you tell me about that, that after school program that you have? I teach the Jefferson Elementary School for a year and a half almost. And during that time, I was creating the PE program. Okay. which I was very grateful for because I felt like for 400 kids I can have an impact and they learned European games and games that I was creating and <laughs> and there oh this is the name in America I'm like well in in my studio I call it this way so it's it's just a wonderful you know going back and forward uh, connecting to 
And I created the after school activity in order to increase their health and fitness. I saw what their weakness was and then it was easy for me to just fill that in and make them stronger. And that way we went with the fifth graders to a fitness test um, at the end of the year and we got an award for excellence of wellness and the kids improved from the beginning of the year and at the end of the year this so is much it was significant Jefferson elementary. Jefferson elementary school yeah and this is also something I want to focus on I want also for the schools to know a world champion is here and I want to spread the word I want to have an impact on the kids um, I want to create a program we can use for all the schools or any school I can create whatever we need I just want the best for Hawaii and Hawaii's Keiki. Well, I want to help and make sure that everybody knows that a world champion gold medalist is here, living in Hawaii, loves Hawaii. Thank and you so much. you definitely go beyond the lines. And <laughs> Thank you so much. I know you read my book. I read it. Tell me about the book. The book was interesting. Yep. And a lot of points I totally agree and I'm already using. Yep. Um, but every leader who wants to be a leader has to read it, my opinion. I think it was very easy to read, but at the same time it was with wonderful tips. And it's not only about tips, it was a guidance. You don't feel you have to do it, but it was just giving those examples, coming close to reality. That was something I really loved about the book. It was really, it was inspiring at the same time too. And you can learn very new quotes that you used. I love the quote you said about um, a risk and the baby, that if you don't take a risk, yep. you know, and you don't crawl and stand up, you will never, you know, go forward. And this is what life is about. We have to go forward. Yeah, risk promotes growth. Yeah. Yeah, no, thank you so much. I feel honored that you read my book. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you, Luby, you're very successful. Um, how do you define success? <laughs> um... Yeah, success for me um, is love. Uh, success is the patience and the consistency to pursue your own goals. And success is the satisfaction to help others. I think that's the best definition I can give for success. The whole combination of that is for me success. Great. And when you were on the quest to winning the gold medal, why do you think you ended up winning the gold medal? I was and am a non-stopper. <laughs> if, if you have that word in, in, in English, I don't know, but I was a non-stopper. Okay. Um, I visualized gold, I smelled gold, I touched gold, <laughs> everything was gold, and um, I was perfectly prepared. I was prepared for everything. And... Um, on that day, I, I exploded. I always go over my maximum, but that day was different. That day, I I knew I had my wings, and I'm gonna show everyone who I am and why I love that sport. So, being on the stage is when you really fight for gold. You don't really think about the gold anymore. You just wanna make your work and be proud that you finished it the way you've expected it. What will happen after? is in the hands of judges yeah and it's normal gymnastics like every other sport is not the most objective one but so is life yeah every person has a preference but in order to win gold you have to be visibly better so if somebody says okay you know that routine was not that beautiful or less everyone has a right to say so but if you're visibly better than the rest then you, you get the gold. And that I made that for my country makes me very happy. Now, before you go on and do your routine for the championship, okay, like mm -hmm. let's say a few minutes before, what are you focusing on? Um, I'm visualizing my routine. That's uh, basically I go to the wall, I close my eyes, and then I visualize my routine, how I'm doing it perfectly. Um, and then just like one minute after, I'm standing on the stage on the corner and waiting to hear my name. And then once I'm on stage, I'm on fire. It's like I have yeah. like the, uh, you know, the Rocky movies. Yeah. And, um, I, put my, I put my head on, on the other side and I am a completely, Rocky. I'm <laughs> like Rocky, yeah. Um, no, it's just like it's, it's different, yeah. Great. 
I want to ask you, Lou B, what's been your greatest obstacle that you had to overcome in achieving your success? Definitely nervousness when I was uh, little. Uh, let's say when I started with 8 to 15, I was very nervous. I was shaking and sometimes I would vomit. I was really, uh, I had a lot of pressure. I would, when I started my sport, even rhythmic gymnastics before, I always won. And having that pressure to win again and again, I think that made me feel, you know, be so nervous for the next time. But once I got the bronze medal at the World Championship 2012 in Bulgaria, I broke the ice. And I broke also my confidence even more. And I was, nothing could stop me anymore. I stopped being, I was always nervous and excited, but I would say more excited than nervous. I had no fear. I was out there not to get a specific rank or a, a place. I was there to share my passion and love and to challenge myself and, you know, just compete against myself. And that was, that was beautiful. No, I love hearing that because you remember in my book how I talked about yes. excited versus mm -hmm. nervous and you experience the same types of feelings. It's just mentally the mindset you should focus on being excited instead of focusing on being nervous. Mm. And that's what you did and that's why you are the world champion. Now, yeah. what do you hope to aspire to achieve in your future? I hope that I can expand my business. I hope that I can touch as many minds and hearts here in Hawaii as possible and be a good example for them. Not the good example, I want to be the best example. Um, being a champion is always going for the gold um, and I really hope that I can do this here. Um, I know my knowledge and my know-how, um, but I'm ready to give it to everyone. Many champions, they keep their secrets for their own little group or their own club. Um, and it's not only about sport. This is a golden key I would like to share with every human being so they can get their own champions in their life, succeed in business, succeed in their relationship. This is what I want to be here in Hawaii. This is what I want to spread, my, my energy, my, my aura. Well, I, I think it's definitely going to spread, I mean, through Hawaii and the United mm -hmm. States and probably the world, knowing you. You have such a great personality and you have such a great vision of what you want to accomplish. I want to ask you one more thing before we close, Luby. Mm -hmm. why, do, why do champions become champions? Because they go over the comfort zone. It's easy. But beyond they, the lines? Beyond the lines. <laughs> absolutely beyond the lines. Um, there is a specific drive in, in a champion that how bad do you want it in a good way? Um, and you focus on that and you visualize that and you continue your hard work and it's not about the sprint at the beginning it's the sprint at the end that makes you the winner so you have to be consistent keep moving forward and then sprint and it really depends how strong are you still at the end what are what your reserves how much were you able to train your mind to be a little faster or even a little more faster than the rest. And once you hit that finish line, you made it. Oh, I love hearing that, Luby. I love, I love going in depth with you and you sharing your insights, you know, and really picking your brain about, you know, what makes a world champion, why, why you won the gold medal. And thank really want to thank you for being here on today's thank show, Luby. Thank you, Rusty. Luby. Also, congratulations on your book. Oh, thank you so much, Luby. <laughs> You're welcome. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please check out my website, RustyKomori.com, and connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. I hope that this show and my book inspires you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.